I'd like to welcome Dr. Diana Davis. What I what I want to say about Diana before she starts is that I watched her video um, in the Dance Your PhD competition, and it really it was amazing. And what it really made me think about Diana is. We, we know that she's a mathematician and we know that she's an educator, but seeing that video, Diana, really made me think of you as a math communicator, where it's not just that you know how to teach, it's not just that you know a whole lot of stuff about math, but that you have the, the talent, the ability to convey that information to people in unconventional ways that make it a lot more accessible to people who might not find mathematics something that they would gravitate towards. So, um, well, welcome. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you to Jim Prop for suggesting me to um, be involved with Gathering for Gardner. It seems like a wonderful organization. I'm hoping to continue to be involved with it for many years in the future. Um, so I wanted to tell you about, about these spinning things. I heard about them at a talk by Joseph O'Rourke about 10 years ago, and I just got obsessed with them. So I'm gonna share um, my screen to show you sort of the beginning, the middle, and then we'll do the end together. So this is, this is a design you can find online. It's called Magic Spinning Card, and it makes a square um, spinner. And, um, so I wanted to make other shapes and I spent quite a bit of time, uh, like roughly in 2013, 14, 15, trying to figure out what made this design tick. So I guess I should um, just, just motivate in case you didn't see the video of what we're going for. All right, here's the cat. So, so this is a design of a cat that spins. Meow. Yep, just like that. That's a cat. Um, um, I have also made other other shapes like this eye. So this one is an eye shape. It's supposed to, I made it circular in the middle and then like an oval-ish pointy eye shape on the outside. So it would sort of look like a blinking eye-ish um, and many other shapes. So for example, this, um, I tried for a long time to do a star shape. This right here is a it's like six pointed star of David shape. This took, it took me forever to figure out how to do this kind of thing, basically because I was figuring out the constraints of the system. I made lots and lots of them that didn't spin. Um, they would uh, like spin a tiny bit and then they would stop. Um, so for instance, this one I put, this is my sixth attempt at making a five pointed star. And in order trying to make a five pointed star, I learned a great deal about what you can and can't do with this sort of spinning um, thing. So I hope that you've come in with a shape that you're thinking about. If, if not, like now's the time. So this, for example, is a circle. And I showed you a cat, an eye, uh, and two different kinds of stars. And um, let me tell you a bit about the, 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 eh, the math behind it, I guess you could say. So here's the design you can find on the internet. This is the one that I saw. This is, to the best of my knowledge, the spinning card that exists in the world outside of the work of Diana Davis. Um, so here's how I f figured out eventually the constraints of the system. So if you, so here you cut on the black lines and you fold on the red and green lines. And so that's how you get something that spins like these things that I've been showing you. And you can pick any shape as long as it has the following property. So you put a dashed line down what you could call sort of like an axis of symmetry of those red and green folds. And then you take a, the, the picture and you just mirror reflect it onto itself, which I've done here. One of them is a little bit lighter than the other, so you can tell the difference. And the thing that's important is that those lines, the black lines, those cut lines don't intersect. And that allows it when it's spinning, it allows everything to nicely pass, um, like move past itself. If you have things that overlap in this picture, the line, cut lines that overlap in this picture, they're gonna hit each other when you try to cut, uh, um, spin the thing. So for example, so this is one that's made on a computer, so everything's really nice. Um, here's the eye shape that I showed you. If you, and you can see this one, I made this by hand 
and the lines, the folds aren't all perfectly in a stair step, but when you superimpose it upon itself, um, the, the, the cuts miss each other, so the thing works. And here's a heart shape. I like to make this one every February. Everybody loves it, including me. And if you superimpose it on itself, you can see the parts don't touch each other. So, so that's the, um, that's, that's what you can do. Okay, so let's do it. So take your piece of paper, fold it in half. And this is gonna be that, um, that fold that went across the middle of the paper. So fold it and give it a nice crease. And then we really want this crease to be limber. It's actually gonna, part, part of it's gonna have to bend in one direction and part of it's gonna have to bend in the other direction. So um, fold it back and forth and make it nice and limber like that. Okay, so now it's quite floppy. We've probably, I don't know, denatured the paper or something like that. Okay, so here's what you do. So now what we wanna do is you wanna draw a zigzag up from here. So, um, somewhere near the middle, draw a line at 45 degrees, roughly 45 degrees. It obviously doesn't have to be perfect. So there, it's a pretty legit line segment. And then we want to make a zigzag. You want them to go 45 degrees up in one direction and then 45 degrees up in the other direction and keep it going a couple of times. Um, I would say like six is a good number, but if, if you wanna be, um, you know, an overachiever, you can make tiny little zigzags like I did in this one and make a lot of them. It's fine, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's pretty robust as a design system. You can take it to the top or not. Okay, there, I made my zigzags. You don't have to make yours. I probably won't need the ones all the way to the top, but I have them. Okay, now, now I'm gonna decide that I'm gonna do a circle because that's simple. Um, and I'm going to do it. So our design has to have bilateral symmetry, as I just discussed, because if you don't have bilateral symmetry, when it's spinning, it'll hit each other and it'll stop. Um, but it doesn't have to have symmetry all the way down. You can do, for example, the cat. The cat had a head up here and like a body down here. Um, it has to have symmetry this way, but it doesn't have to have symmetry this way. But for simple simplicity, the first time we do this, I'm going to have us do it. I'm going to do it with, with symmetry in both directions. So now what I'm gonna do is, you see these points that are going to the right? These ones right here. Um, I'm going to make curves that go from the, from the fold up to those. So those are my um, holes and I'm gonna go up and hit them. So here we go. So I'm gonna make like uh, quarter circular arcs that go up from the bottom and then hit the, the point. Maybe you can see that. I made a little cut like that. There's the cut. And then I'm gonna do a few more that go up to each one. I hope you're, uh, hope you're doing that at home because it will be super fun if it works for you too. Okay, so, I'm, so now I've got three. They go right up to those dots. And then I'll, I'll have room for one more. That's fine. Go, go, go. Need two hands. Okay. Okay. So now I have all of one side. Okay, and now in order for this to work, I have to make sure that the other side isn't gonna hit it. So what I'm gonna do just to make it easy for myself is I'm gonna continue these circular arcs over to the other side with my pen. Doesn't have to be like exactly accurate, obviously, but just to help myself. Eh. Luckily, they don't give PhDs for how perfect your circles are. Okay, so that's like, um, I, you can't really see those, but I put curves there. So, and those are where I'm not allowed to cut. Those are like um, the white lines on the edge of the road. You're not allowed to cut there. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is cut up from this side. So those were the black dots. Now I'm gonna make these white dots. And I'm gonna cut up from the bottom up to those white dots, making sure that I don't hit my uh, lane lines. Okay, you can, all right, you can chat if you're having a 
a fun time or a unfun time. You can't really tell what's going to happen yet. We're making unicolor rainbows over here. Okay, that's about it. Okay, and now I don't really need the top of my the top of my design here, so we can just I can just cut because the rest of this we're not. Didn't know have enough space for that. That's fine. Okay, cool. So now I have this. Got it. So some people say it looks the same. Some people ask to repeat. Okay. Yeah. So so the first thing I did was to uh, draw the zigzag. There was a request to repeat, and then I put a dot on each side, on each like endpoint, and then I cut curves up to that endpoint. Okay. Then I said, okay, that's it for the black dots. I'm gonna put little white dots on the other side. And I made it so that these circles that I cut continue all the way over. I made pen marks to sort of continue these cuts that I made as pen on the other side. And then I cut between those to make circles. Yeah. Um, so between the pen lines, those are like my lane lines. I cut a circle, a circular, a quarter circular arc, um, hitting up to the white dots of which there were three. Okay, so there's the cutting part. Um, actually, I, I mentioned in the, the, the abstract or the description that you know, you've heard of origami, but that's just folding paper. This is kirigami, cutting and folding paper. So we've done the cutting part. Now it's time for the folding part. So the folding part, is perhaps the most challenging part. So we're going to make it easier for ourselves. So take a nice thick marker or a pen that you can depend on. And let's say we pick the lines with negative slope and I'm, or whatever, this, these ones. So I pick one of them, let's say that one. And then I'm just gonna mark all the ones that are going in that direction. So it, it's itself and it has three friends. And that's, that's, and then, and that's gonna be a mountain fold, like a, an up fold. And then, oh, we have a second half of this. So I unfolded it. It's gonna be hard to see because there's not a lot of contrast here. You, do you want to copy a mirror image of the same thing up there? So let's see this. I, would, I think of it like a mouth. Like if this one, you want it to be like an open mouth like this. So if I draw this in, so this is your goal. You wanna have lines like that. So I have the thick lines at the top and then they're mirror images on the bottom. So it's like a mouth. Rah! Okay. Then you have to have x-ray vision um, on the back. You can kind of see, you can kind of see where my lines are because I use this really thick marker. Um, I want to mark the other ones, the ones that I didn't mark on the other side. So like this one. Yeah, so you want to mark the ones that you didn't mark on the other side and all of them. Like that. So one way you can think about it is like, do you have the, on this side, you have a mouth like that. On the other side, you're going to have the same mouth like that. Chomp, chomp, chomp. The reason we're marking them is because the folding can get a little complicated. So you want to give yourself the best chance of success from the beginning. So I would say take a little, I've, I've noticed along the years that the more time I spend marking it, the less unhappiness I have later. Um, so if I, so this was, a, so yeah, if your paper doesn't bleed, well, if you have like a really bright light shining in your eyes, you can hold it up to the light. That's one option or you could turn up the brightness on your computer screen. The lines are in opposite locations. So that if the paper were see-through, you'd have a zigzag. You're getting a very bright flashlight here. Yeah, so mine, you can see that it's a zigzag. On this side, you can only see one, but when I do this, you can see it's a zigzag if you put them all together. So the, the lines are in opposite ones. Oops, if I flip it over, you can see it's a zigzag. They make a zigzag together, but by themselves, no. 
Okay. Okay. So with that, we embark on the folding part of this project. So get ready. I'm going to limber up your fingers. Okay. So everywhere that you see a mark, you're going to make it into a mountain fold. So I see a mark here. I'm going to make it into a mountain fold. Then I'm going to go to the next one, which is parallel to it. And I'm going to make it a mountain fold. And I'm going to give it a nice crease because the more creasy it is, the more it will remember which way it's supposed to bend. And this will make your life easier later. So along each of them, every time I see a mark, I'm gonna make that into a mountain fold, meaning it folds up. So that line is on the top of the mountain. That was not my best work. It's okay. And so I did all three on that side and then I'll do all three on the other side of the top. Make all those nice dark marks into mountain folds. Really serious mountain folds that remember who they are. They are mountain folds. They are proud to be mountain folds. Okay, all right. That takes a bunch of time. Okay, mountain folds on both sides, exactly. If you happen to be uh, done with that, go to the other side where you have your other marks and yeah, make all those, all the dark marks into mountain folds, exactly. Mountain folds everywhere you made a dark mark. So what you should get is because we had a zigzag, every other zig on the opposite side, uh, that means that the folds are gonna alternate like over, under, over, under, over, under. So what we're making is this really ingenious spring that goes on the inside. Yeah, so I've now managed to actually fold my thing with alternating mountain folds and valley folds. And because I was really insistent about it, what happens at the center? Right, at the center, you make a little, um, I don't know, like a little bird beak or something, like that. Yeah, see how they come together? Oh, yeah, and then, and then you had your crease in the middle, so that should give it um, an extra fold, a sink. There's a sink, okay. Oh yes, you also fold the middle. Yep. And then if you're lucky and you folded everything, it should go like that and fold flat. It worked, yay. Good job. Somebody just said it worked, yay. So it should go like this. So I just wanna hold mine up real quick to Diana. Um, in case any of you are struggling with the same thing that I am, I got mine folded up exactly the way yours looked. So once I have that, how do I make it do the springy motion? Oh yeah, right. So the very most outermost one, the little flappy here, uh -huh. and the, on the other side, the very most outermost one, if you grab them there, and then you go like this. Oh. Oh, that's so cool. Someone says, new personal goal, I might want to make a giant one. And that's a great idea. Um, one thing I would say is that um, the, the way, you know, um, I showed how you have to make sure that the thing, one side doesn't run into the other side. And one reason to use cardstock instead of something like construction paper is because cardstock holds its shape. This is basically flat. It might be a little curved, but it's basically flat. And I think when you get a really big one, um, gravity would start to overcome the flatness of the paper and it would bend. And so you might try using something thick, like maybe poster board, but maybe cardboard. You know, you want, you want the folds to be very bendy, but you want the pieces to be very flat. And um, like um, hinged aluminum would probably be best. Um, someone says, you should make a pop-up book that uses this principle. I would like to, I am concerned about the book part of the pop-up book. Um, I have thought about that. So, when you put it in a book, I got this book here, this proto book. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, you can put it in a book and then it turns. That works. Yeah, we could use this. I, I, I do have a few pop-up books that friends have given me after I started having this particular obsession. Um, and basically what happened when I got these books is I stopped making my own pop-up cards because I was like, okay, you win. Um, so I, I, uh, I'm, I don't read them anymore because I like making my own thing. Um, someone, I was un misunderstanding the question. The very first fold we make. So I asked you to make this fold in the middle of the paper and then fold it back and forth a whole bunch of times until you've totally destroyed the paper fibers in the middle. And I totally agree. Yes, um, it ends up being eight folds. The four on the left are valley, the four on the right are mountains. I totally agree. So that fold ends up being these folds right here. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Does it end up being others? Um, that's pretty much it, plus the one in the middle. So that's where that, that original fold of the middle of the paper here ends up out here. And they all look like they're the same, but they sort of alternate. So some of them are valleys, some of them are mountains. That's why I asked us to, to really limber it up back and forth so it can go both ways. Yeah. So um, that this one, this shape that we that that I made and that Rody made and maybe a lot of you made is a circle, which has um, a lot of symmetry. It had symmetry going um, going bilaterally, which it needed to, but then it also had symmetry um, going this way, so that we could make it with scissors. If you want something like a cat that doesn't have the up and down symmetry, then you have to cut it with an exacto knife, and that re just requires a little bit more equipment. It's not quite as safe for children. And um, basically I have led groups doing that for a long time, but um, it's not nearly as fun as using scissors. So um, I've gone to this method because you can just use scissors and it's very fast. All right, and you're welcome. Um, okay, I see a question, oh, Diana, asking about um, 45 degrees and changing up the angles. Yes, that is a good question. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what happens if you do 30. Well, 30 and 60 are still perpendicular. Oh, oh, I see you make a zigzag. We could try it. Let's try it. So um, someone's asking us to redo it again. And so I'll do it again. But this time I'll make um, different zigs and we'll just see what happens. So the steps again, um, and you're welcome to go and I'll keep answering questions, but I'll do the steps again. So um, fold your paper until the middle is super bendy. And then take your pen and do zigzags. I was doing them 45 degrees the last time, so feel free to do 45 degrees again. But this time we're gonna try something else. So I'm gonna do some kind of approximation of 60 degrees. And then just so that we have it all in one place, some kind of approximation of 30 degrees, all in the same design. Who knows how it's gonna go? All right, so I made some zigzags. Yours could be more normal than mine. Mine are different. Okay, now um, I'm gonna pick, let's say the right side and put black dots on the right side because I know that that's where I'm gonna try to go with my curves. All right, so those are what I'm gonna try to hit. And then I'm going to um, take my scissors and yeah, it's good for them to be far apart because then everything's wider. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna make some curves that go up to each of my dots. So there's my first cut. Turn my spotlight on again. So it's clearer. Here's my second cut. Up to the dot and my third cut up to the next dot. And then the last cut up to the last dot. Okay, so now I've got curves going up to each of my dots. And then um, I'll make the opposite points white dots so that I know where I'm trying to go here. Okay, and then so that I know where to go, I'm going to um, take all the curves that I've already cut and extend them, try to extend them um, like symmetrically on the other side. 
So I have to do that by looking at it, but here we go. Okay, so I took the cuts that you can see as shadows on this side, and I made them into pen uh, curves on this side. I just sort of, I tried to make them symmetric. It's not the best maybe, but it's close enough. And now I'm gonna cut on this side and make sure that I'm like in the middle of the lines, uh, in the middle between the lane lines. Keep it between the navigational beacons. So here we go. And I'm gonna hit the white dots. My target practice is not exactly right, but it's okay. This, as I think I mentioned, this design is pretty resilient. So that's good. And then I'll have one on the outside, that's fine. Okay, so now I, I drew in my lane lines in pen and I made sure that my cuts go through, go between the lane lines in hopes that the left side won't hit the right side. And now the outside, I don't need it anymore. So I'll give a little snip so that oh, I only have nice curved things, not this paper thingy. Okie doke. So there's that. Now for the marking. So I'm gonna pick a direction. Let's say um, the positive slope lines, yours will probably all be parallel, mine are not, but they're all in this case having positive slope. And I'm going to mark them. And then um, I want to exactly mirror symmetric picture on the bottom. So I'm going to open it up and make it so that that looks like a mouth. And then everything down here is matching what's on the top. There, so that it looks like exactly a mirror image of itself. And then I'll, so I've, if on this zigzag, I've marked like roughly half of, I've basically marked every other segment. And then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna mark the segments that I didn't mark before. So the union of the ones on the front and on the back is the entire zigzag um, spring thingy. So those are the ones on the back. These are the ones in the front. You'll notice this one, um, this one is like a mouth going this direction, mouth like that. Now let's do the folds. And so now we're gonna make each of these dark things a mountain fold. So I see, I see a dark line here and I'm gonna fold on it. And I'm just gonna do that for all of them. And you can do it too. So each time I see a dark line, I'm going to fold on it. So it's a mountain top. Good. This middle one can be a toughie, but you can sort of use both hands and go sort of like that. Someone had a word for that. What was the word? Sink. Okay. Sink. Apparently this is called a sink. Either that or it's something else is a sink and I incorrectly thought this is what it was being referred to. Okay. Okay. So, so I've done a bunch of the folding. Now I'll do the other side and keep doing my folding of the mountain tops. And now I'm gonna flip it over and fold the other mountain tops, the ones that I hadn't got yet. Yes, the center fold is just like a sock puppet. I think you can make a very nice duck shaped greeting card with that middle type of fold. As you do the second round of mountain folds, you might find that the card starts to just turn because it really wants to take its form of a spinner. Okay. Okay, now I got all my folds. Let's see what happens. Huh, seems to work. The 60 degrees and the 30 degrees doesn't seem to have caused any major Engineering difficulties seems to work. So why did I not do that? Hmm. Oh, that's what it is. That's what it is. Okay, so the um, the 30 degree angle, like the, um, the shallow zigzag, it spins really slowly. And the 60 degree angle, the, um, the tall zigzag spins really fast. 
So how about that? I think that if you look at it, I think the outside spins more slowly and the inside spins faster. So there's that. Question, by what angle does the middle part rotate when you flex the whole thing? Is there a formula? Let's see, someone else earlier was saying something about 540 degrees. So at 8.34 PM, someone said, it looks like the total spin of the center is equal to 90 degrees times the number of zigzags with 90 degree zigzags. So this person had six zigzags for a total of 540 degree spin. So is that how many I had here too? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I had six on this original one at 90 degrees, or roughly 90 degrees. And so I guess if you go this way and then you make it all the way to completely flat like that, uh, hmm. Pick your word for it. I wish that this person had given a justification for their claim. Can anyone think of a justification for 90 degrees per zig? Um, one thing I'll say, oh, you just observed it. Cool, great observation. I love it. Good, I'm glad you're still here. Um, one thing I'll say is that um, if, you, if you have this beautiful thing and you just like stick it on your table and you leave it there for like a year, a year, or, or you, you take it with a pin and you pin it to your wall, um, it will look really cool. And also the paper will curve over time and it will lose its ability to do the thing that it loves to do best, which is spin. So if you want to keep them limber and in shape so they can do their thing, I recommend um, just storing them under a book and then that spring in the middle will stay springy. And when you want to take it out and use it, then it will work. Yeah, did anyone do anything other than the roughly circular thing? And how did it go? Let's see, we had someone ask to do it a second time um, because you all were doing it with wider lines. How did it go the second time? Okay, it looks good, but it isn't spinning. Um, yeah, make sure the folds are all correct. And that it folds flat. If you can get it, if you can get it to go like this, then you're probably on the right track. And remember with well, the question that Rodi asked was, oh, I've got it like this, but then how do I make it spin? And the answer to that is, um, okay, on the top or whatever, grab, grab the flap there with one finger and thumb, flip it over, grab the top on that side with the other finger and thumb, and then pull those, and then it will spin, especially in the middle. Um, observation that the shape that it makes when completely folded is different when the zigzag is less than 45. Totally agree, it's true. Yeah, um, I've gotten them to, when I make really complicated ones, so that they, when they're flat, they really line up right on top of each other. I think they probably should in, if they were really accurate. Like, like sort of like, that where they're all on top of each other like that. Okay, now it's spinning. The point about how to make it flat and grab it worked. Yay, wonderful. Second one, use a sharper zigzag and it spins less. Yeah, that was my observation. Sharper, I wonder if that means like 30 degrees, sharper zigzag. Um, I agree. I think when you make that like 30 degree zigzag instead of 45 degree zigzag, I think it means it spins slower. And then the 60, my 60 degrees zigzag in the middle is spinning quite fast. I think the sharper the zigzag, the more it spins. So anyway, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of degrees of freedom here. As you can see, you have the shape, you have um, how far you wanna push like asymmetry. Um, you have the angles of the zigzag. You have the materials that you make it out of. I've tried other materials. I tried like transparency material that did not work because it, it didn't go back. Um, but you could try all sorts of things. Cardboard, I haven't tried um, and see what happens. So thanks everyone. And um, thanks for being here this evening. Thank you so much. That was to, to quote some of our attendees. That was really, really wonderful. And good night, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you.